Two Wolves, a Charlie Stone novel by Trevor Tuhig. Chapter One. Charlie looked out over Sunny Sands Beach from the promenade as rage rose inside of him. It was early evening and the beach was empty. The dark clouds descended over the stormy sea. How could a place that had once brought him so much hope and joy now feel so alien to him? Had he never have found Amy Green's body in the wet sand, his life wouldn't be such a disaster now. Why couldn't he just have left it to the Coast Guard? Why didn't he just take his daughter, Maddie, for the ice cream first, rather than go rushing in? Typical Charlie Stone, never able to leave things alone. Gulls were descending on the beach, screeching their warning songs, searching for scraps in their little gangs. The wind howled, causing sand, dirt and grit from the path to blow up in Charlie's face. He gripped the metal railing tighter. He felt the coldness and wished it would flow through his body, up his arms, into his organs, into his heart and stop it beating. His phone buzzed in his pocket. Charlie was annoyed that he'd even left his notifications on. He didn't want to be bothered. People, too many people, the cause of the pain. He just wanted to be left alone. Eventually letting the comfort of the railing go, Charlie put one foot in front of the other and walked down the promenade. He stood at the corner of the stad and contemplated his next move. More accurately, he contemplated his next pub. The mariner? The ship? The taste of whiskey was still at the back of his throat from the afternoon session he had just had, so he turned back and down the ramp and onto the beach. His phone buzzed again. This time he took it out. Maybe it was Tara. Maybe it was Maddie. Yeah? Hi Charlie, you okay? You sound rough. It was the familiar voice of Charlie's DCI, Darren Jackson. Yeah, fine. Where are you? It sounds horrendous out there, Jackson continued. Charlie looked up and noticed the clouds had formed and felt the first raindrop of the evening on his hand. Just out, you know. Have you spoken to Tara? She's not answering her phone, boss. Have you left a message? Yeah, three. Good. Are you going to head home tonight, back to Ashford? Technically, Charlie was registered as living with Tara in Willsborough, Ashford, but for the past three weeks he had been living out of a small suitcase in the Grand Burstyn Hotel in Folkestone. Tara was pregnant and she didn't want the stress and bad vibes of Charlie Stone around the house. He didn't have the heart to tell his boss. Jackson had become a friend over time and Charlie didn't want him to know the full extent of his downfall. Uh, yep, going soon. Do that, mate. It's the weather is coming in and you don't want to be stranded down here, Jackson said. The rain was coming hard now, so Charlie pulled up the hood to his gilet. Cool, sure. You need to get your head back in the game, Charlie. Your leave ends this weekend and I want you in bright and breezy on Monday morning. If you are serious about going after Troy Wood... Of course I'm serious. Why the hell wouldn't I be? Well, you need to get yourself together. Stop drinking and get focused. Thanks, boss. That's helpful, Charlie said sarcastically. I know you've had a hard time of it lately, but you're bigger than this. You can resolve it. Boss, I have to go. Speak soon. The rain fell harder and Charlie took shelter in one of the caves at the back of the beach. Jackson meant well, but if he knew the half of what was really going on in Charlie's life, he probably would ease up a bit. He held his head in his hands and tried to rid himself of the thoughts from his past that kept on coming. They just kept on coming. Maddie on her bike eating ice cream, smiling at him. But that was all gone now. He took out his phone and rang his daughter's number. It was hopeless as he knew that her mother Jo had blocked his number. He still ran though, just in case. After it failed to connect he put the phone on the ground next to him, took off his shoes, socks and jacket and walked slowly and steadily towards the water. The light was fading and the beach was deserted due to the weather. Waves crashed and the sea foam spattered Charlie's face as he continued walking deeper and deeper into the icy English Channel. He smiled. Take me away. It's too much. Take me away. When it was deep enough, Charlie began swimming, smashing his arms into the sea, hitting the waves as hard as he could, kicking his legs ferociously. I just want the pain to end. There was a gnawing, dull ache in his heart. It was getting worse. Time is a healer, they say. Not for Charlie. The pain was getting worse. The sea rose higher 
and soon the bitterness of the strong liquor was replaced by the salt of the sea. It was in his nostrils, in his mouth, in his eyes. He continued pounding the ocean, seeking solace, seeking redemption until his arms couldn't swim any more. Maddie, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I love you. Charlie let the raging water carry him as his world faded to darkness. Finally, there was silence. <laughs>